Hello guys, how are you all? So this is the most long awaited video of my exam experience for my part 2. Uh, I know you all have been looking forward to it as to when I would be sharing it. So I've just come a bit early to my clinic so that I can share it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give out each and every detail how I started um, till the end. And uh, this would be useful, I think, for a lot of candidates who are traveling for the first time all by themselves, who are a bit scared and uh, afraid like me. <laughs> I am not a solo traveler at all. Like, uh, I always travel with my family and this was my first solo trip, such a long trip, Dubai to Melbourne, 14 hours straight. So, uh, yeah, anyways. So first thing is get your visa before you book your exam. I repeatedly tell you all this, so don't underestimate this. You will get visa of one full year. You don't have to apply through an agent. You can do it yourself. I did it myself. It took me one and a half hours filling all the details on the online website of Australian uh, tourist immigration. And uh, then I went for the biometrics. Once that was done, uh, that's it. I got my visa. It took two months. And then I had booked my exam date. So I was sure that, uh, you know, at least I have the document required to travel to enter Australia, basically, because exam date you will get. But if you don't get the visa on time, then what's the point? Uh, so once that was done, I booked my exam date. And uh, if you're planning to do a course in Australia, like, for example, my exam was on May 15th. It was my mom's birthday on that day. So, uh, yeah. I booked my practice session with the mentor, uh, supervised session rather, uh, three months before, like I booked in February because you won't get the dates if you keep on waiting because there are so many candidates who want to practice just before their exam. So make sure that whatever your exam date is after you get your visa, three months in advance, you book your supervised session dates if you want to practice in Australia just before the exam. Uh, keep at least uh, six days in your hand. So my exam was on 15th May. I traveled on 6th of May. Uh, 6th of May, 10 o'clock in the morning was my flight and I reached Melbourne the next day, 5.30 a.m. because you lose seven hours, you know. So I could not sleep in the flight that much. There was a crying baby in the front seat and uh, I flew in the morning so Technically, when I landed Australia 5.30 in the morning, it was just 11 o'clock at night, which was my sleeping time. Uh, so the moment I landed, now the first time ever I got the jet lag. Now I understood what that was. Because though it was the early sunrise, my body was behaving like as if I'm in a stupor, you know, like I just wanted to sleep. So I was done with the immigration, which just took like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, but there was a long queue at the baggage, so it took an hour, some problem had happened. Uh, you have Wi-Fi at the Melbourne airport, so uh, download the app Uber and you buy a SIM card there uh, at the airport itself. Uh, taxis are way expensive than Uber and taxis are a little far away and it, there's a lot to walk and Uber is right outside the airport. So if you have two big bags, if, you, you, if you're going to practice in Australia, then you'll have to carry all your stuff. None of those people provide anything. So I had two big bags, one bag was full of dental materials and the other was my clothes. So um, it was a long walk to the taxi and plus, wow, uh, yeah, you don't get trolleys, huh? like uh, they, it's paid trolleys. So carry uh, the luggage which has four wheels so you don't have to, you know, push it around. So Ubers are more cheaper, uh, so download that app and use it. So I had booked Oaks. Uh, Oaks Melbourne on William Suit, which was like diagonally opposite the exam center and it's a decent uh, hotel. So uh, the check-in was at 2 o'clock and I was so sleepy I like literally begged them to give me a room and I paid extra for early check-in. I went, I slept at 7.30, I woke up at 3.30 in the afternoon like and then I understood okay this is what jet lag means because till 9 3 a.m. I could not sleep again <laughs> because I had already slept off so it took me three days to get back to the Australian timeline for my body to behave 
so don't do the mistake of landing in australia and having the exam immediately the next day no your body would be such that your mind won't be active and you have to be so alert and conscious in the exam so you need to have six days in your hand also one more advice don't care how uh, or what other people are doing the entire flight that you are traveling wear a mask you don't want to fall sick like when you travel there this suggestion was given to me uh, by another candidate who's a good friend and he gave his exam a month before mine unfortunately he could not clear even he doesn't know why so uh, he told me that he had not worn the mask and when he landed there after two days he felt so sick all the practice sessions that he had booked he had to let them go and he was put on heavy dose of antivirals and antibiotics so that you know and then finally he was okay to give the exam so i wore the mask throughout my flight like i did not remove it so take this tip from this video so uh yep so uh, i got up then in the afternoon of my day one and i went and saw the exam center it was a sunday so it was closed but at least i saw the building it's right opposite the garden flagstaff garden uh, the building on the top it's written rk russell kennedy it's a tall building and it's on the sixth floor 469 is the building name 469 la trobe street that address is etched in my memory forever <laughs> If if you are a vegetarian uh, like me, uh, you have a lot of supermarkets there, and I would uh, encourage you to book a studio uh, apartment in Oaks or Pegasus, which is right behind, uh, so that you get a kitchen. You can buy a lot of groceries. There is Metro and there is Easy Mart, and you can cook it yourself. Or uh, just if you go straight on the Larcho Street after the exam building uh, on the right side there is Biryani House you can buy stuff from there also and on the left side there is Dosa Place uh, where you can have the food also so vegetarian food uh, you can find it easily if you can cook yourself great uh, so food was sorted and I was anyways carrying a lot of packaged items and uh, yeah one thing you should not you cannot carry fresh food like apple bananas or nuts or uh, anything which is unpacked because the immigration authorities asks you and they don't allow that so if you are not sure you just go and tell them you know i have some food if you want to check check so i was carrying you know those ready made soups and uh, noodles and uh, this thing safola oats so they were all packed they were not opened so they let me go with that because i didn't know if i was going to find something uh, so anyways, uh, that was sorted, uh, day one was like that, day two I uh, travelled all the way from Melbourne to Clyde where I had the practice sessions, there I was staying as a paying guest uh, in an Indian Punjabi family and yeah, uh, one thing, uh, google the temperature before going, I did carry a fur jacket with me, uh, the temperature was 5 degrees, I wasn't expecting that and definitely i was not expecting rains and i didn't have umbrella so the first thing i did when i landed was to buy an umbrella because it was drizzling and i just could not walk without it so there was 7-eleven and i bought it i didn't have the travel adapter so i went again and bought that because uh, there there is a triangular sad smiley like sockets you know which i could not find here in dubai so buy a travel adapter there and uh, carry an umbrella uh, and carry nice thick winter clothes so I went to Clyde and I was staying there in a small room out there and then most of the time I was practicing uh, because this mentor's house was just two minutes away. Uh, nine to six we used to practice. So uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, six days I practiced. Fourteenth I had a skilled off key uh, day and fifteenth was my exam. So uh, 13th was my last technical uh, practice session, 14th uh, the whole day went in Skeldowski session because there are different mannequins. You will know more about it as I speak in other videos in detail about the Skeldowskis. So Skeldowskis are different sort of mannequins. You have a different mannequin for uh, the Sajun Javel scaling, for uh, the LA, for X-ray and the Syncope and uh, the CPR stuff. So uh, yeah, 
uh, you have to practice on those mannequins which are quite similar to the ones which are there in the ADC exam. Um, so once I was done with that, I packed my bags and I came back to Melbourne. Uh, there's a lot of traffic so keep that much time in your hand and make sure that the day before your exam you get plenty of rest and sleep because next morning 8 o'clock you have to be there at the exam center. Now what food can you carry and what you should prepare uh, for any exams that I have given and I have given a lot of exams in my life. I like to prepare my own food just the day before I don't want to leave it to anybody. So uh, now when I came back to Melbourne, I was staying in Pegasus where I had taken a 1 BHK apartment because I wanted some space as I was going to live there for 3 days. Uh, it's again just 2 minutes from the exam centre, it's right behind Oaks. So it's walkable distance so you save on your taxi and it, it's a good place to stay. So I would recommend that, that if you want to stay, you can stay there. Uh, so there's Metro right, uh, just walking distance 5 minutes from Pegasus. Metro is a nice supermarket. I, I bought uh, bread and some vegetables and I made a sandwich uh, in the morning of the exam day and you have to pack it in a clear container like either you take a plastic box or you take a plastic ziploc bag and you put your sandwich in there and um, that was my lunch for the day because uh, okay when I'll, I'll tell you why because there was a lot of other food items available in the candidate lounge if you wish to have so that one thing you have to carry, you have to carry your safety glasses and my day one was technical so I was carrying loops and my light, charge it well uh, and just be relaxed and I wore my scrubs and I went like I'm going as a doctor, I'm a doctor so I didn't wear anything as I wore my scrubs and I went there. So wear your mask, uh, N95 mask, no the mask okay, <laughs> buy it from the place where you're flying and N95 mask you're supposed to wear even before you enter the ADC center. So 8 o'clock I was there at the examination center, 8.15ish, uh, you know, we were sitting, 8.30 we went up because they wouldn't allow us before that time. They did the registration, it was 8.45 and then they made us sit in the candidate lounge for around 20-25 minutes. There you could have uh, your coffee, tea, and they have bananas, they have cookies and they have those protein bars. Don't talk, they have cameras there, they see and they are, you're not supposed to talk to anybody. So just sit everyone. So on day one you'll have uh, the 12 candidates who are appearing for technicals and the 6 candidates who are appearing for their day one of OSCEs. OSCEs get split into uh, sessions, 6 candidates in the morning and 6 candidates in the afternoon session. Technicals all 12 go together. So uh, then entire floor is of the ADC exam. So when you enter, you're done with your registration, they give you a locker where you can keep your stuff and you're just allowed to carry your lunch and your loops, lights, that's it. So uh, then all 12 of us, they took to the room where the technical setup is there. Now it's a nice hall. It's a nice, spacious, clean white hall where we keep all the stuff and uh, you'll have your number and the chair. Uh, my number was candidate nine. And patient came over. No, no? Yeah. Okay. So uh, my, my, this thing, technical station was nine. So you're just supposed to come at that time and sit, don't touch anything. You're not gloved, you have just sanitized your hands and you're sitting and there's a big screen on top and they'll start a video explaining you what all things you're supposed to do and supposed not to do. So be very conscious and see that video. They'll tell you which areas you can touch and which areas you cannot. And when you're doing your mocks before the exam as a practice session, follow that. So uh, basically, just share it, you know. Basically this chair, your chair. You can touch this only with bare hands. You will not touch this with your gloved hands. And this is the patient chair and this is the bracket table. You will touch with your gloved hands, not with your bare hand. Understood? So when you come and you sit, the first time when the video is going on, you adjust your chair. Okay? Because once you are done with your gloves, you cannot. Meaning you can, but you have to remove the gloves and do all the hand hygiene and the drama that they want. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Adjust your chair and in the chair there are two slots, okay? One is to go up and down and one is, you know, that slant thing that happens and the backrest. 
adjust both wear slots of both hmm? don't be feeling awkward if you can just adjust the height but not the back because you don't want to be at an angle while working i like to sit straight or even recline a bit you know so i just bought that settings and sit and don't touch anything unless the examiner asks you to so there was a lady examiner with us and a dental assistant the lady examiners were going around once the video was done she was like you can have a look at the jaw don't remove the jaw <laughs> of course just reflect the cheek and see if the candidate number is the same as they'll give you an id so you take that id and you put it inside here don't let it touch on the patient chair like don't let it hang a lot of people uh, you know i mean let it hang and then it was touching here and there so uh, even if you're asking they uh, show the examiner your id and put it inside like this you'll have a pp like this so um, yeah i saw the candidate number was 9 mine was 9 station was 9 everything matched i was fine then she was like you can see what's there in the drawer now there is a trolley hmm? yeah i have the exact trolley what do you believe it <laughs> let me show you here the trolley huh three drawers in the exam also exactly like this there would be three drawers and the top of the trolley now these three drawers now you can open and close only with your bare hands and these are called as the clean areas you can remove everything and keep it on the top only with your bare hands so when when your time would start hmm, when the video is over and she's like your time starts now you would go and do your hand hygiene and uh, hand hygiene means wash your hands for 40 seconds sanitize it wear your loops whatever and then you will open this and you will remove everything and drop it on the bracket table you will not touch this not the bracket table the top of the trolley this top of the trolley is dirty hmm? this has to be touched only with the gloves and this has to be touched only with your bare hands so you will remove things like this and you will drop it like this so remove everything and keep it on the top whatever is there so that you don't have to come back change so remove everything keep it on the top arrange it well so that it does not fall off and uh, the sharps are there so keep it in the plastic cups only which were there so uh, you remove everything you keep on top then once that is arranged you go back to the sink sanitize your hands again and wear your gloves and now you come the mask is always on top you have not removed it you are not supposed to remove it until you exit it so now once you are done the gloves now you can just touch your bracket table your top of the trolley and your patient now uh, the thing was see i'll show you this is my hand piece and stuff this is at this angle okay and normally i i deal with 10 patients a day and i never manage to drop anything like it's very rare that i would drop my hand piece or something in the exam this is the like their slots are like this you understand so many a times when you're not used to uh, like even it happened with me i'm keeping it like this and it just dropped you understand when i'm keeping it like this so when you are there and you have all the equipments you make sure that you understand how the hand piece and everything is kept it's like literally at a 90 degree angle uh, or rather almost parallel to the floor while you keep the stuff so it drops very easily now when it drops suppose accidentally you have dropped the hand piece or the three way or anything else don't pick it up they are watching with the camera even if the examiner is not around you cannot the examiner would pick it up for you but to do that you have to raise your hand and she is going to come or he is going to come and they are going to ask you what are you going to do this in the clinical scenario what would you do if you drop it so you you have a big viva to give so i'll just give you a gist of it uh i dropped a gauze first thing she came and then she was like so what are you going to do so i was like you know when you will give the viva imagine the scenario as if you're doing it go slow because you don't want to miss anything so i said first thing is i would ask my dental assistant to come over remove her gloves wash her hands sanitize it wear a new pair of gloves pick up that gauze throw it you know in the uh, dirty box remove her gloves sanitize her hands again 
wear a new pair of gloves and then come back and assist me so in this tone exactly in this way with the animation i told her because i didn't want to go fast and forget any one step because if i forget i feel an infection control so you have to go this slow there is another big viva if i drop the hand piece it's not the same steps that i just said right now i will come to that when i'm talking about infection control in another video so it's okay to drop a lot of people dropped around me even i also drop stuff it's okay uh she she understands that she will come she will patiently listen to you and then she'll pick up that stuff and put it back in the place where it was and you can continue your work do not get stressed that your time is running out it's okay if you have practiced enough 6 hours or more than enough to finish all your tasks okay so yeah that was the about the stuff you carefully see in the so there'll be two instrument cassettes one would be on the bracket table keep your bracket table as decluttered as possible keep just the stuff required for the particular task the rest of the stuff keep it on the trolley you see what all is given you you will not require everything that is provided to you uh what will not be provided to you uh would be putty it would be vaseline it would be what was there? The enamel hatchet and uh, the scalpel and the blade. So in the examination area, there will be 12 chairs in a straight line. And at the start of the entrance, they'll have a big table, like, like a big table, you know. There the dental assistant is standing and she has these things which I just mentioned. So you're supposed to go to her and stand in a queue and tell her what you want. Now, she, now the first thing that anybody starts, I'll tell you the sequence of the tasks also, how you're supposed to go to save your time. So the first thing which everybody does is of course go and make the putty, you know, because you don't want to forget that and it takes time to set. So uh, as soon as the time starts, everybody runs to get the putty. So you go stand in the queue and she'll just give you two putty. So it, it's in a piece of paper that she's put two blobs of putty. She will give you only two. You come. Now, the quantity is less. But you can take it as many times as you want. But each time she will give you just two paper. So first thing is, you make the putty for your index. So you take that putty only from one paper and you mix it nicely and you put it. It's a fast setting putty. You don't have to roll too much. Like five, six times you do like this and you put it, it will start setting. So I have got 4, 6 tooth number as my crown prep. So I mixed it and I've put that and I waited just about it to be set a bit. And I started with my task of caries. For me the caries was tooth number 3, 7. It was a difficult tooth because it's far back but it's okay. So I, I am starting with caries and on the hand piece I have put the round burr. Now always remember whenever you're getting up from your chair and going, do not leave the burr in the hand piece. You always have to take it and keep it back in the burr box and you have to close the burr box. Again I'll speak about this in the infection control but just remember, take a piece of paper and write down the steps so that you don't have to watch this video again and again. You should at least twice so that uh, things go in your brain because this is a lot of information but certain things you're supposed to just write it down that bird box always needs to be closed if you get up from the chair and go you don't have to off the light every time uh, certain times you can keep it on in amalgam task but most of the time if you're getting up to get something off the light it's sensor control so just off it or there is a slot on the chair also the bracket table you can close it and uh, Always be conscious, don't be in a rush. Accidentally don't get up and push your chair behind, don't do that. Use a body to do it. And uh, upright the patient chair if you're going, don't let it be reclined all the time. Uh, you cannot turn the mannequin a lot here and there. Little bit like this or little bit like this is okay, but not too much to the left or too much to the right. Lights are very bright, that's not an issue. Equipment is good actually, I liked their hand pieces the straight and the slow one the three way was good uh i'll come to the teeth and all stuff so uh, one second Pause. yeah so as i was saying uh yeah you take the putty and you've put it and don't just sit there waiting you start with your caries task gently start removing the occlusal area 
and uh, then once that putty is set you remove it check if it's come out properly with the scalpel cut it right there and then and prepare your putty index and keep it on the side go back again to her the DA get the putty uh, she's again given you two uh, if your putty index has come out nice you make it now for your provisional make at least two indexes for professional so now you take both the paper putties and make a big one huh? the key to a good provisional crown is to have a very thick putty like it should be one centimeter thick so you take both the putties from both the papers and you make a thick one and you put it now make a nice table of it on your tooth and then you go back to your caries and start doing it I will continue this video after my patient so I'm stopping this video and uploading it but I will remember that I'm still at the start of the video where I'm describing the task which needs to be done and uh, because my patient has come and it's already been 25 minutes I know this was going to be a long video so let me finish with my patients and uh, then again I'll reshoot a video once I'm done with my calendar for the day probably it's going to take another four hours to finish and then I'll shoot a video again describing the rest of the task and then only I'll leave from the clinic, okay? So go through this and uh, for the next video also sit with a pen and paper. And yes, one more thing, uh, when the time starts, the big screen which is there in front of you has all the tasks mentioned, written very nicely. So take time to read and whenever you are going to start working on a tooth, just double check it's the same tooth or not on which you are going to work. So they will write, you have to do composite on one one, which was my task. You have to do crown and crown cutting and provisional and four six. One six was endo, three seven was caries and two six was amalgam. So amalgam and composite you can find out because they are already cut teeth, you know, they are prepared teeth for you. So you can't go wrong in that. Endo, double check the tooth because you don't want to damage another tooth. So one six was endo. And of course, when you get a drop, when you're working, you know you're on the right tooth. 4-6 of course uh, was uh, crown prep and 3-7 was caries it's a different tooth only of the caries so you can't miss it so everything is very well returned and if you have a doubt the examiner is there to help you out so this was it and i'll see you back after a few hours bye bye